Arsenal Fan TV. What a weekend it's been for Arsenal. First of all, there was a terrible result. Losing again to Chelsea, which was just horrible. I came out of the ground. Chelsea fans giving it, quite rightly so. You know what I mean? It was a very good performance by Chelsea. They're, they're a very good team. I think they are going to win the league and respect due to them. You know, we hammered them at the Emirates. They got us back. Um, after that, we did our videos. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Then after that, went back to my car. Somebody had broken into my car, nipped my laptop, lit my Beats, headphones. It, oh, it was a horrible day. <laughs> But listen, that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. That's uh, football for you. That's what we do. That's what we love. Um, and then I'm sure a lot of you have seen the whole sort of spat that happened um, between Gary Neville, Sky Pundit, ex-Manchester United player, very good player, and myself. Um, as he was on Sky Sports uh, on Sunday after the Manchester United game, and criticising the fans that came on Arsenal Fan TV. Described one fan as an idiot for holding up a placard. That fan wasn't on Arsenal Fan TV, by the way. Um, and also said that fans who were criticising the manager were embarrassing. And I responded to it. I'd done my, I don't know if you've seen it, but I'd done like a Snapchat reply in which I basically said to Gary Neville that, you know, I, I felt that he was very condescending that he was very disrespectful to the fans and that, you know, basically something that I've felt for a long time. There are a lot of pundits, a lot of newspaper guys and that, you know, not all of them, but a lot of them treat fans like second-class citizens. And, you know, listen, football has three components for me, three important components. You've got the players and the team which we all support, which we go to watch and love, yeah? You've got the TV companies like Sky, like BT Sport, who show the live coverage of the game, which that's what makes it the spectacle. If, it, if we didn't have TV, it'd be like a sport like netball where loads of people play it, but nobody really is watching it. No one's interested in it. And then the final component is the fans. If you take fans away from football, football is dead. You'd have empty stadiums, you'd have no support. It would be boring. It would be dead. You know, I don't care how many skills Messi did in a game. If nobody's there to watch it, nobody be interested in it. But yet still, the fans are always treated the worse. Whether it might be by the clubs when it comes to ticket prices, when it comes to where they put away fans, when it comes to sorting out travel, whatever it is, we're treated the worse, right? Fans, every time. And then by a lot of pundits and by a lot of uh, the old school media, they look at fans and they're like, what's up with you lot? You know, keep pipe down. We're the only ones who can talk. You know, we're the only ones who can talk about the game. You lot are not experts. Now, listen, football fans are not claiming to be experts, but they have an opinion. And when you've got fans that travel, and I see it week in, week out, Arsenal fans, who travel the length and breadth of this country, not just Arsenal fans, football fans in general. I mean, I was saying the other day, you know, Sunderland fans. You know, we all moan sometimes as Arsenal fans when we're going up to Sunderland, we've got to do that drive. What about them Sunderland fans who've got to travel everywhere they go practically, a mega distance? And look at their away support. It's incredible. And they're not even doing well, right? And these fans, no matter how their team's doing, will travel the length and breadth of the country to follow their team. And what? After the game now, they've not got the right to have an opinion on how their team's performed. And it's the very reason I formed Arsenal Fan TV in the first place, because I wanted to give fans of Arsenal Football Club a voice. And, you know, listen, the, the platform's grown and it's gone from strength to strength. And I'm not going to sit here and say that everything we do is perfect, because it's not perfect. But we try to give fans a voice. We're the only platform, as a matter of fact, that will give any ordinary fan leaving an Arsenal game a chance to have his say. Any. As long as you're not going to come on and abuse people, you've got a chance to come and have your say. And that's whether you're going to be critical of the team, that's whether you're going to big up the team, you have a chance to have your say. And listen, there are regulars on Arsenal Fan TV, 
Guys like DT Troops, Mo. These guys have appeared on Arsenal Fan TV and over a period of time they've come on quite consistently and they've become very popular. Fans love to hear from them. So yeah, we have these guys on on a regular basis. But we have many, many, many other fans. All you've got to do for those people who say it's the same people, just look at our videos. And then for Gary Neville to come and criticise fans for having a pop at Arsene Wenger, which, by the way, he's done before in the past. Check out some of the, the videos online. He, he, he said up to last year that, you know, Wenger didn't have a clue. He was attacking Wenger and he has a right to do that. It's his opinion. That's what he's paid to do. Now, when fans do it now, they're embarrassing. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just not having that. Fans have a, a right to their opinion, and that's what we do on Arsenal Fan TV. That's what we do, and that's why I responded to Gary Neville and said to Gary Neville, I think you're wrong. He responded back to me, and it's been going back and forth, you know? And um, now he's said that he's willing to come on Arsenal Fan TV, and I'd love that. I'd love for Gary Neville to come on Arsenal Fan TV so that we can have it out, so we can talk, because I, I really feel passionate about this that I'd like to explain to him why I feel it's just as important for ordinary fans to be able to talk about their team as it is for him to talk. I mean, he's a paid journalist, and as I said, I ain't going to diss Gary Neville, right? Because he's a very, very good pundit. Yeah, very good. So I ain't going to diss him. He's entitled to his opinion, and I respect him for that. But he must respect the fans as well, and that's what I want to tell him. When he comes on here, I will tell him why that I think that him and many other these journalists need to start respecting the opinions of fans. Just start like we respect this. I don't agree with everything I hear Gary Neville say. I don't agree. I've heard Paul Merson before on Sky. A guy that we've interviewed before on the channel. A guy who used to love watching play, criticising, tearing to Arsene Wenger. And I didn't agree with everything he said. I don't agree with a lot of the things that the fans say when I'm interviewing them but they're entitled to their opinion this is not North Korea yeah this is England right and those fans who've invested their time their money their effort their emotions to follow the team around the country who turn up at Chelsea who see Arsenal put in a horrible performance who see us get beaten yet again with little fight they have a right, if they're angry, to express that. Just like the week before, if you watch the videos after the game against Southampton, many of those same fans and others were expressing their delight at Arsenal's performance. Just like if you rewind back and go and look on Arsenal Fan TV, the evidence is there, and go back to when we played Chelsea earlier on in the season and we beat them 3-0, they were expressing their absolute joy at a wonderful Arsenal performance. I think people forget that. I think people think it's just rants on Arsenal fan TV. It's not. And the other thing that kind of gets me is that we're kind of like easy to attack because we're kind of new kids on the block. And I don't think a lot of them, maybe they don't have the respect for us. But talk sport which I like TalkSport, by the way. I listen to TalkSport all the time. Cameraman can tell you, when we're driving, I'm listening to TalkSport, so I'm not dissing them. But TalkSport, they built the station on fans ringing in and ranting. They built it on that. Adrian Durham, guys like this, Cundy's show, they built it on that. Gary Neville's not having a go at them. 606 on 5 Live, phoning after the game with Ian Wright, fans ringing up. I was listening the other day, this fan rung up, Ranieri's got a go, a Leicester fan. I was thinking, ah, Ranieri, he won the league last season. But I listened to the guy's opinion. Even though I thought to myself, that sounds crazy, I listened to him. Because you know what, he watches Leicester week in, week out, I don't. I just remember last year what Ranieri done and I think, wow, amazing. But I listened to that guy. By the end of it, I was thinking, okay, I can understand what he's saying. I'm not, I still don't agree that Ranieri should go, but I can understand where he's coming from. When a guy rung up 
talk sport the other day and said, I've had enough of Klopp. Klopp ain't done nothing, he needs to go. Again, I thought, is this guy is he mad? Klopp! Look how many clubs would love to have Klopp. All right, I know he's having a bad time. But I listened to him. I listened and I said, oh, okay. I don't agree with you again, because I, I would still give Klopp way more time than this. He's still early into his adventure at Liverpool. But I understand the reasons why. And you've given me what you think should be an alternative. And I, I listen to that. That's what it's about. It doesn't mean that that guy's opinion is an expert opinion. It means it's his opinion. It's how he feels. And he's got a platform there where he can express that. And I listened to it and I enjoyed it. And why can't he have a voice? And then let me just address one other thing. Fans now who say, oh, but Robbie, it's embarrassing because fans of other clubs are going to get hold of that and they're going to share it. And I can't help that. Those same fans will listen to Talk Sport as well. And they'll listen to the Arsenal fans on there ranting about how Wenger should go and they're laughing their heads off as well. What should, should Talk Sport lock down? Are you going to say that they should close down? Should Five Live close down then? Should, uh, you know, match of the day two, or, should they close down? You know, it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Listen, even before I did Arsenal Fan TV, after a game, Arsenal lose, I can guarantee you, I've got three threads, I can show you my phone right now. They would either be texting me or they'd be ringing me up. Ah, Robbie! <laughs> what happened to your boys? You got done again. Uh, that's how it goes. And I do the same to them. When Man United ring, I, even now, I still do it. I ring them up. Yeah, what happened, Biggs? What happened to your boys, man? You spent all this money on all these players. What happened to... That's what we do in football. It's just that now, yes, there's videos out there that you can share. But you can't pretend. We are a real football channel. We go to every game week in, week out. I was in LA in the summer. Well, club didn't pay for that. We paid for that, yeah? And we went out there, like all the other fans, out of our own pocket. I went to Norway, Sweden, pre-season watching Arsenal, interviewing fans after the game. I've interviewed fans after every single game this season. What do you want me to do then? So when we win against Southampton, let's put out 30 videos of us all going, yes, brilliant, da, 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 da. Danny Welbeck. But then when we lose next week against Chelsea, I say to the camera, now pack it away. We don't want to put no videos out today because some guys from some other clubs might share it. Come on. Come on. We're here week in week. We, this is Arsenal Fan TV. We're here if we win. We're here if we lose. We're here if we draw. Yeah? And we are 100% behind Arsenal Football Club. 100%. I met Ivan Gazidis in the summer. And Ivan Gazidis has been criticised heavily before on this channel. But many times. A lot of people tear into Gazidis you know, about certain things to do with a club. And even he said to me, he said, Robbie, what you guys do is professional. And I love the fact that you give fans a voice. I don't agree with a lot, a lot of what your fans say on there, especially when they talk about Arsene Wenger, because I think he's a great manager. But they're entitled to their opinion. I really respected that man for saying that. That's a man who gets criticised heavily sometimes. Sometimes, when he doesn't even deserve it, on this channel. And he could say that. So Gary Neville, bring it on. Love to have you here on Arsenal Fan TV. It'd be great to sit down. We can have a civilised discussion. We can talk about it, right? You can say how you feel about it. And I will tell you from a fan's perspective how I feel about it. So... You've called it out on Twitter. You said that you'd be happy to come on. There's a space right here or wherever we want to meet up. And let's do it. Let's do this. Looking forward to it.